The bugs. Oh my god. You got an iPod, uh, iPad, iPhone? iPhone. Uh huh. Man, you need you need, you need you can't hear me. You need to throw that iPhone away, man. That's what you need to do. No, sir. <laughs> no, no you, sir. No, you need to throw that iPhone away. You need to. Usually, you, you don't need, have no issues, so nah, I don't you, know what to tell you. Nah, you need to take that. You can't la- hear me though. No, I can hear you. Just I can hear you fine, man. Uh, it, try to hear you. Try to hear you a little bit better, but it sounds like you. It sounds like it's a lot of a lot of feedback in the background. But we'll 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 make it work, though. We'll make oh, it work. My we'll make it work. But is it? You know, you you need to take that left hand. Raise down the window and take the right yeah. hand <laughs> and throw that iPhone out the window. That's what you need. To no, sir. No, sir. Ah, that's what you need. Isn't that what this call is about? <laughs> Jeez. Man. I go ahead on your Android and do what you have. Jeez Louise. All right. Well, check it out, man. Uh, before we get started, thank you very much for coming on and chop it up with me. That's what I do. The best conversation starts over here. All right, Naya in the building. What's going on with you, my yes, G? Sir. How you feel? Oh, nothing. Just out here trapping. All right, all right. So, for for you know the story of you getting into trucking, let's start from the beginning, mm-hmm. man. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself, and you know, tell us how you how you got into trucking and what you was doing beforehand. Okay, well, my name is Naya. I've been trucking for almost three years now. Um, I got into trucking. I guess, long story short, I got in a divorce. Me and my ex husband, like he was a truck driver. He was a local driver. He never ran OCR. Um, I used to want to get my license. I used to tell him, hey, let, you know, let me get my license so, you know, we can run out on a road together and we can run out of our house. He never wanted to do it. Oh, no, we got a divorce. He made most of the money. And then, like, after that, like, I pretty much, like, lost everything after we got a divorce because I was getting that deeper. But, um, I was pretty much like, I need, you know, like, I need a, a um, it's a certain lifestyle that even before my acceptance that I just like to have. And also, like, I never want to reach his level of low again. And so I was just trying to think about what I could do and it was just like, go ahead and trust. Like, there's more to it. That's pretty much the, the long and the short, the long and the short of it. So I went and got my license and I never looked back. All right. So you say you was, how long you was married for? Uh, a little over six years. Six years? hmm What happened? I mean, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Because <laughs> I, I, I've been married, uh, 25 years deep um and, oh, we, wow. and, and we uh and we separated so after that pretty much done <laughs> but um the 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 story of of you getting married he he was already a truck driver before you got married to him um he had his license at the time that i met him he was not there's so much within this story, but pretty much he already had his license. He wasn't currently driving at the time when we got married. When we, uh, well, when we got together, when we got married, he was driving, but um, the circumstances we were in at that time, he was doing like this. He was driving like a box truck, even though he had a class A, mm-hmm. and he was getting paid like twelve thousand hours, like really getting beat over the head. And then he um, ended up working for U.S. Food, where of course that was completely different. Um, as far as payrolls, where it was like 12 and it was like $37 an hour that he was taking. But yeah, so he was a trucker. He was local. He never was over the road. Wow. Okay. So how did you, how, how did y'all come, how did y'all come together? Like, <laughs> I mean. So the, the church that I, the ministry that I was in at that time, pretty much we met at the church mm-hmm. in the ministry that we were in. And mm-hmm. so like they would, I mean, I don't know how long the podcast is or how deep you want to go with it, but you know, you we got we, we, we got time. <laughs> we, we got time. We good. We good. Oh, so yeah, this we ministry, got time. it's a special ministry. It's a special ministry. I'll say that it's not for everybody. Not for a week apart. Um, this ministry originally they started it for people who were coming off of drugs or um, was just had a wild life or whatever, and they just kind of wanted to get to know God or whatever. And so that's how they like originally started it. They also have a church portion, um, but the ministry is like they're like a, 
it's a side of it where you can come off the streets if you wanted to, and you come in and they have class three times a day, they pray three times a day, they read the word three times a day. And because of the lifestyle that some people came from, because some people came from some really, really, really crazy wild lives, they had a lot of strict rules. So my ex-husband, he did have an addiction before. Um, I didn't know exactly what he was doing or how bad it was. When I met him, I just knew that he had like a wilder life before I met him. Me personally, I never struggled with addiction or anything like that. I was really just trying to get my mind back focused. So that's why I end up at the ministry. And at this ministry, when you're dating, like, <laughs> um, it's kind of like very foreign for some people are older concept, but they kind of did things like, I guess what you would say is sporting. Like mm-hmm. me and my ex-husband never kissed, never touched, never, we never went on dates by ourselves. We always had somebody there with us. So we met through the ministry um, and they would have like what they call banquets. Mm-hmm. And at the banquet, you would like talk to the gentleman like in the ministry. So that's how I met him. And at the time, of course, since he was in the ministry, he was, he was not working. And then when we actually decided, when we actually decided to start kind of getting to know each other, he ended up getting a job like a week later once we actually became official. Okay, okay. This is a weird ministry, but if it works... <laughs> If it works, it works, and like man. It's not for everybody. Like, honestly, for those who, it works for those who really, really need it. I'll say that. Right, I don't regret right. it at all. I learned a lot. Um, I've seen people's lives be transformed for real. So, it, it but, you know, it was a little, and I, after a while, like, for me, it was definitely something I needed just to kind of step away for a second. But it was a little, a uh, little, little strict for me, you know, after, after a while, you know. <laughs> So, like I said, if it works, it works, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay, that's what's up. Hold on right quick. I sound louder. Hold on. Uh-huh. Oh, shoot. Okay, how's that? That sounds... Do I still sound loud? My voice you said, is... Do I sound loud? No, I sound loud. I still sound good, right? Not to me, but you sound good. Uh-huh. All right, all right. So, all right, so your, your your husband, or at the time, six years, where where did the turn come? Like, where where, where did it um, start going downhill? He relapsed. So, and, um, I, you know, we tried to work through it because, like, he was a really good dude, really, really good person. When he wasn't on that stuff, like, completely polar opposite, when he wasn't, you know, doing drugs or whatever. But, like, we got married and we moved fast. We got married, bought a house, got a couple cars. Um, Like, we just started kind of just building really fast. And I think it might have been a little too fast. And so, like, maybe about maybe a year and a half in, he ended up relapsing. And I think, I mean, I can't really say why he did it, but he relapsed. And so, after that, it kind of just became, like, he would do good and then he would be left and he would do good and he would be left. And then after a while it would just become more frequent. And for me, like every time he would do that, we would be doing so well, but then we would have to rebuild all over again and kind of start like, you know, rebuilding our money again, rebuilding our savings, you know? And then I just got the place. I'm like, I just felt like he wasn't trying mm-hmm. to, it was just like, he kind of gave into it. And so I was like, you know, I can't keep doing this. And so, um, we se- were separated for about a year and then finally, like, uh, I tried one last time and then he relapsed again. So I was like, okay, we're going to, we're just going to have to be now, done with this. Now doing his relapse, what was his drug of choice? Um, I don't know if I want to go deep into that or not. Um, okay. cause I try not to tarnish his name, but it was, you know, it was real drugs. Like it wasn't weed. It was like real drugs. Like, you know. So, <laughs> so, like do, a, yeah. so during that time, it 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 wasn't it wasn't tumultuous to the point of him, you know, like being a totally different person or anything like. He that. said it wasn't what it wasn't tumultuous at the time, like you know when he would relapse, you know he wouldn't, you know he wouldn't put his hands on you or anything like that, right? No, see, that's what I'm grateful for. That's why, like, I'm very mindful of how I speak of him because, um, I mean, that's a, that's a, you know, a dark part of him that he has to fight. But when he would relapse, he would leave. And so he would just, like, I started knowing 
if he wasn't home or at a certain place, because usually he's very timely, very like, you know, very timely. I can always pinpoint where he would be at what time. And if he said he was going to be somewhere or do something, that's how he was. Whenever he would relapse on drugs, he would just disappear. So sometimes he'd be gone for a couple of days, you know, at a time or up to a week or two weeks, I think, the longest it might have been. He would just kind of disappear. And then when he would do it, he never think he would, he wouldn't want to be like high around me or anything. He would always kind of separate himself. Spend a whole lot of money, <laughs> but he would just separate himself. And then I think the one time where I kind of, like, this was the very final time where I was already kind of tired, but everybody was like, you know, you know, just try it one more time, you know. And they kind of moved him faster, us both faster, when we, because we had been separated for about five months. The final time where I was like, okay, you're doing too much, is I got an apartment. I was trying to start fresh, and so we ended up coming because I moved out of state. And he ended up coming, even though neither one of us really was ready for that step, but people kind of was like, why don't, you don't need so I doesn't need to be by herself, like in another state or somewhere. So he came back, but he wasn't ready. And so this is like the the most I've ever seen him do, like uh, because I don't know why, but he ended up kicking in the door uh, of the apartment or whatever. I almost ended up getting arrested <laughs> in that situation. But other than that, he usually would just stay gone. And then after he spent all the money or whenever, whatever that moment was over, he would just like kind of come home. <laughs> now you know I'm I'm. You know, I am glad that I'm listening to this story, man, because usually when one person falls down the rabbit hole, they usually take the other person with them. How was it? How was it for you not to fall in that trap? Um, he was on that harsh stuff, so I already seen. You know, well, <laughs> I mean, growing up, you already seen what that stuff can do to you. And then also, it was just like, I thank God because for one, I was, I was raised in church. Right now, I'm not very as religious as I was. I still believe in God and everything, but I'm not as religious as I was. Same here. But I thank God because I know that it really was God and also the, my church family at that time that kind of really just helped me to stand strong in, in that time frame because that's all I really had to um, go through. And thank God my family was around as well, like my sister's. And my mother, and I did, I didn't realize that I was, but I'd gone into a really deep depression. But, you know, depression isn't really spoke, like, more, it's coming more common in the black community, mm -hmm. but it wasn't something that was very spoke, like, common. Like, it wasn't something common to me. When I was growing up, I didn't think that black people could have depression. I don't know who told me that, but for some reason, I'm like, we don't get depression. That's, we don't do that. That's what my mindset was. <laughs> and so I was going through this depression, and I didn't know because that's not something I do. And then, not only the black community, but also even in, it's, it's getting better as well, but even in the church culture, you know, everything, put it in the blood, you know, stuff like that. So we won't address mental issues. And I remember I told somebody, I said, you know, I'm really struggling getting out of bed. And I was like, and I knew it was something wrong. And they were just like, oh, he's just lazy. And I'm like, ain't nothing lazy about me. Like, what do you mean? But I didn't realize that some of the things that I was going through, like getting out of bed, taking showers, doing, still getting dressed, it, it took a lot, like, if I made it out of bed, I was kind of proud of myself. And anything much more than that, like, I didn't even realize that I was starting to look crazy. And my sisters, you know, they saw me kind of going through it. And so they were just kind of like, hey, why don't you wear this? And I didn't know what they were doing. I didn't know that I was outside looking crazy. To me, I'm like, I got out of bed. I'm trying to survive out here. And so they were like, here, put this on. My mom will come up to you and fix my hair. And I didn't realize I was just out there looking crazy. And, like, so I was going through depression at the same time. I had a really good support system, so I thank God for that. And it was a new experience for me because I, you know, I was raised in the hood, so you always see people. You, I even hate to say the word now, but you see the neighborhood crackheads. Sometimes people be joking about them, laughing about them, you know, laughing at them and stuff like that. And when it came to my front door, it changed like just my whole mindset on it, and it just made me begin to see like the attic. You know, like this is a whole person. This is my husband. This is my son. This is my father. You know, like, just stuff like that. But um, all in all, back to the uh, question, I had a really good support system. All right. The, the ministry and uh, a couple other women, there's two other women in particular, their husbands, I don't know why, but their husbands would actually end up tripping out at the same time that mine would. They wouldn't plan it. They weren't together, but they would just always kind of trip out at the same time. And so those two women specifically, we kind of just was like, we just kind of went through it together. 
Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So you, uh, so you got a chance. You, 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 you got your, you know, you got your divorce, um, and you just concentrated on, you know, continuing with trucking. Did you go to school, or did you go to a, uh, or did you go to a trucking, uh, trucking supported school that you know paid for your? I went to a trucking company. Yeah, I went to a trucking company um, out of Fort Worth, and I chose them. I was going to go somewhere else, but I chose them because I, it said free CDL school and no contract. I said, oh, I like that. So they didn't charge me, um, and it was no contract. So after I got my CDL, technically, I could leave if I wanted to without having to owe them anything at all. Where's, so it where, worked whoa, out whoa, my favorite. Whoa, whoa, where's this at, and is this still in existence? <laughs> It does exist. I don't know how people are trying to ask me questions like, how do they stay in business? Like, that's none of my business. But it's called Raider Express. It's in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, and, yeah, you just have to live in, it's, you can live in Texas and one other state that they'll accept it. I want to say Indiana or Illinois. I could have made that up. But there's, like, one other state that you can be a resident at or use somebody's address because that's what I suggest people to do. Um, and as long as you get approved, which is not a really hard approval process, um, they will put you up in a hotel. Um, now with the hotel, if you do have to stay there, you do have to pay that back while you're like there, which is $50 a night. Um, or if you're staying with somebody, you don't have to pay it, but they also give you like a little stipend while you're going through school. So like the first week is a hundred dollars. The second week is $200. Third week is 300. And then the fourth week when you go out with your trainer, it's $400. Um, so it's just a little bit of something like to kind of keep you going, uh, while you're at there, while you're training. And it was only training Monday through Friday and then we had weekends off. Okay. So you, uh, so Rider Express, man, what was, so after you got your, after you got your CDL and, and, and everything, did you continue driving with them? How was the experience up to getting your license with the, uh, with, with Rider Express? Um, it was pretty decent. I mean, I really don't have anything to compare. Well, honestly, based off of some people's experience, it was better than, like, the hotel we were in was nice. They had a good breakfast. It was a, a, a newly renovated location in a pretty decent area. So that was good. Um, they-